In lesson 10.3, you will define and use probability. The probability of an event is a number from 0 to 1 that indicates the likelihood the event will occur. When all outcomes are equally likely, the theoretical probability that an event A will occur is a fraction, the number of outcomes in event A divided by the total number of outcomes. I like to think of this as successes over possibilities. So in example one, it says you pick a card from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Find the, find the probability of A picking an 8. So our successes, since there's four 8's in a deck, would be 4. And our possibilities, since there's 52 cards in this deck, would be 52. So our probability of picking an 8 would be 4 52nds, or simplifying we get 1 over 13. 1 13th probability of picking an 8. In B it says find the probability of picking a red king. Well in this deck of 52 playing cards there's two red kings, a heart and a diamond. Those are our successes and again our possibilities are the 52 cards. So 2 52nds or that's going to simplify to 1 26, a 126 probability of picking a red king. In example two, there are nine students on a math team and names are drawn one by one to determine, determine order for competition. We want to find the probability that three of five seniors are chosen last in any order. Well, one of the key words here is chosen. Our successes on the top are going to be found by choosing three from five. Three seniors from five seniors that are on this uh, math team. Our possibilities are going to be choosing three students from nine total students on that uh, math team. So simplifying, we're going to have to use our combination formula. The first combina combination in the numerator is five factorial divided by 5 take away 3, which is 2 factorial, 3 factorial. In the denominator, we have 9 factorial divided by 9 take away 3, which is 6 factorial, 3 factorial. So we don't divide by a fraction. We multiply by its reciprocal instead. So I'm going to invert that denominator and multiply it to the numerator. So I have 6 factorial, 3 factorial on the top and 9 factorial on the bottom. Okay, now it's ready to cancel, so I'm going to cancel 3 factorial top and bottom, cancel and expand. So now I'll expand 5 factorial in the numerator, that's going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial, I'll stop there because I have um, 2 factorial in the denominator. Okay, and then also in the denominator I have 9 factorial. If I expand that, I can go 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial, and I can stop there because I have that 6 factorial in the numerator. Okay, now canceling, I'll cancel 6 factorial top and bottom. I'll cancel 2 factorial top and bottom. I can cancel a factor of 4, that goes into 8 twice, and I can cancel a factor of 3, that goes into 9 3 times. So it looks like I'm left with 5 in the numerator and 6 times 7 or 42 in the denominator. So there's a 5 42nd chance probability of 3 of 5 seniors to be chosen last in any order. Okay, when an experiment is performed that consists of a certain number of trials, the experimental probability of an event A is given by this fraction, number of trials where A occurs, divided by the total number of trials. 
In example three, you made 15 of 21 free throw attempts. Find the probability that you make the next free throw. Well, the number of trials where A occurred was 15, and the total number of trials attempted is 21. So your probability for making the next free throw is 15 21st, or we'll have to simplify and get rid of a factor of three top and bottom, five sevenths probability that you make the next free throw. Geometric probabilities are found by calculating a ratio of two lengths, areas, or volumes. In example four, we want to find the probability of a dart hitting the shaded region in the target. So to determine that shaded region, which is our successes in the top of our probability, we can um, first find the area of the entire rectangle, and since the diameter of this um, circle is the same as the as the width of the rectangle, we know that the length of this rectangle is twice that diameter, or that rectangle is going to have a length of eight. So the total uh, area of this target is length times width, four times eight. And now we need to subtract the areas of the two circles because they're not the shaded region. And once we subtract the two areas of the circles, we'll be left with the shaded region as our successes. The area of one circle is pi times radius squared, and if the diameter is four, the radius is two. So we've got pi times two squared for the area of one circle, and I'm multiplying by two to get the areas of both circles. Now our successes would be hitting the target itself, which has an area of length times width, or four times eight that rectangular target. So we need to simplify here. So four times eight is 32, minus two squared is four, and four times two is eight, so we're subtracting eight pi from 32, and in the denominator, we have a value of 32. Well, we can factor a, out an eight from the two terms in the numerator. That's gonna leave four minus pi, and we can factor eight from the denominator, that's eight times four. So canceling that factor of eight top and bottom, our exact probability is four minus pi over four, but we'd probably want to approximate this probability. And when we do that, we usually round to three decimal places. So four minus pi divided by four is gonna be approximately 2.1, or 0.215. So we have a 0.215 probability that a dart hitting this target will land in the shaded region. Odds measure the chances in favor of an event occurring or the chances against an event occurring. Odds in favor of event A is the number of outcomes in A divided by the number of outcomes not in A. The odds against event A is the number of outcomes not in A divided by the number of outcomes in A. So they're just reciprocals of one another. In example five, a standard six-sided die is rolled. In A, we want to find the odds in favor of rolling a six. So in favor of means that we want number of outcomes in A on the top, and since there's only one six on this, um, on this die, uh, on this die, um, we have one in the numerator. And then in the denominator, the number of outcomes not in A would be the other five um, numbers on this six-sided die. Okay, so we have a one in five odds of, um, of in favor of rolling a six. Or we could write that too as one to five using a colon. We could write it as a fraction, or we could write it using our colon. Okay, in B, it says find the odds against rolling an odd number. Well, odds against rolling an odd number, the number of outcomes not in A, are the three even numbers on this die. The number of outcomes in A is the three odd numbers on this die. So we have a three, three to three odds of uh, rolling an odd number or 
we want to write that as a one-to-one -one odds, or again, we can write it as a one-to-one -one using the colon. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 to 6 on pages 699 and 700 of your textbook.